Okay, so I'm gonna make a video today about the real the real global warming, okay? So let me tell you what's going on here. Basically, I watched on I watched a video today and uh, saw heard someone talking about global warming, not really understanding the concept of what's going on. So basically what what the act what's actually going on is we're going into an age, an ice age, right? That's what we're supposed to be shifting into right now. That's the period that we're shifting into. We're supposed to be entering into an ice age. And because we're burning so much carbon, we're prolonging our ability, prolonging this ice age from happening. We're keeping it from happening. So, I guess we're keeping this ice age from happening because we're meant to keep it from happening. That's why we that's why we have fossil fuels in the first place. Why do you think we have? Why do you think we have you burning fucking fossil fuels? You think we'd have you burning fossil fuels if you didn't need to burn fossil fuels? You're burning fossil fuels because you need to maintain the amount, the amount of uh, carbon dioxide for the trees, so the trees can thrive and do better. And basically, we're supposed to, we're supposed to be going into an ice age right now, and because we're supposed to be going into an ice age, we have, but we and we're but we're also burning, making tons of heat, and tons of, you know, CO two, which makes greenhouse gases. Which you know, if you look at how it actually works, the sun comes through it, light heats it up, it absorbs more heat. So it's, we're get, getting warmer in here, but and that's a good thing because we don't want to freeze over because there's a point where you start to freeze over and then it's it's it spirals out of control and then that's it, boom, you can't do nothing about it then. But one thing that is important is that we need to start to build we need to start to be able to have the ability to control the temperature both ways of this planet. Because this world goes through points where it gets hotter, and this world goes through points where it gets colder. And we need to be able to control the temperature of the world. That's why, I'm not sure if you've ever seen the uh, big huge, uh, there's, a ta there's a tower in, uh, you know, towers in, in Arizona. They made these, it's a central, po central point tower with a... Uh, basically salt that is uh, liquefied through extreme temperatures by all these mirrors that are all in a big circle around this tower underneath it and they all have uh, solar tracking or whatever and aim their mirrors, their focal points up towards the tower and heat the tower up. Well, basically, if we made a bunch of these systems out in the, in the deserts where we're going to have major, major, uh, major uh, long-term droughts. We set these up out there and we absorb the energy and then we don't take the energy and use it in forms that we do to make more heat. What we do is we take all the energy that we collect from the sun there and you turn it into direct cold by using an a, uh, anhydrous, anhydrous ammonia refrigeration system. So basically what that is is you have anhydrous ammonia when you heat up anhydrous ammonia in a, in, a in a certain scenario, you get all your numbers right, you get cold on the other side. So, when you heat it up, you can use all the heat from the center, central tower to create vast amounts of cold energy. And you blast out the cold energy into, th into the air around. And when you blast out all this cold energy, you can create thunderstorms, you can create any type of weather phenomenon you need to make. And we can control the temperature of the world. So, and between, you know, absorbing that energy or making cold, we can we can regulate what we need to do, and we can build all the all the parts and make these make all this all automated. So very minimal human interaction. But uh, yeah, that's the great thing about an anhydrous ammonia refrigeration system is that you don't need you don't need a uh, you don't need a, what do you call it, a 
uh, compressor. There's no compressor, so it's less. There's no moving. Like no, there's not any parts that are gonna wear out quick. You're gonna have maintenance and shit on. You get everything set up right with the anhydrous ammonia, and you get set to do it perfectly. It won't leak, and then it'll be good. But yeah, that system alone, implemented on a massive scale throughout the deserts, would be enough to be able to give us the control to control the temperature of our world, of our surrounding. It would be able to just be, it's basically like a massive um, snow machine, right? That's what they use, what they would make snow with or whatever. But instead of, you know, just making snow, this is making, you know, this is making actual cold. They're actually producing cold, cold energy. So, and, and, you know, it's, it's going to be sucked up and, and, and it's not going to make much of a difference, but it'll change it one degree or two degrees and that can, that can make a big, a big difference, you know, on the, on the big scales. But the problem with, with the system that we have now, the problem with, uh, with how our grids are set up is we have all of our water. We have concrete everywhere. Everything's covered in concrete. Concrete just pulls the water off, like goes down drains, and pumps out the most effective drainage system possible. We let the water just go away. We let it pump out, out into the oceans, through the rivers, all the way out into, out into nothing. So every time that we get rain, in these big big places like California, you know, LA, it's all concrete, and we wonder why there's droughts and shit out there. Anywhere we, where humanity sets up, or eventually becomes droughts because of their lack of connection and understanding of the world that's unfolding. And basically, what's happening is you have all this all this water, and you're channeling it perfectly out into the ocean. It's funneling it all right out in the ocean as quick as possible. And you know, we don't want to have backups. No water flooding out in the streets. Can't can't have that. But there should be another way to do it. You should be saving the, all the water that runs off. All any rainwater that we get should be added back into the table. And all around the table too, because the moisture that evaporates is what makes it more rains. We don't, you don't want to just pump all the water back into the ocean because th at this point, the rainwater has gave you perfect desalinization of ocean water. So, through evaporation over the ocean, we get all these massive storms. We have all the ability to collect all this water, but we don't collect it. We pump it right back into the fucking ground. We channel it off our roofs and push it right into the gutters to be drained down effectively quick back into the ocean as possible, right? Why? Why don't we do that? We got a perfect roof up, up on around our house. We could be collecting rain, all the rainwater that comes off of it and reusing it for, for purposes. And all that water could have just been in the ocean and could have been all salinated and full salt. And now it's perfectly clean and well, it may not perfectly clean because all the modern chemicals pumped into the atmosphere, but you know, as clean as it can be, as clean as you're going to get, you know. And we, we could be using this water over again, putting it on our plants, have our own gardens, grow our own food. Instead of having grass in our yard, we all have our own fucking little farms, our own little plots of food that we make, and we produce food, we make fucking food, peppers, zucchini, squash, pears, blueberries, fucking apples, peaches, everything, you have all, all these, you know, all sorts of fruit trees, all sorts of good stuff, I mean, wh why do we, why do we not plant fruit trees in all the neighborhoods? All the neighborhoods all around the world, we could be planting fruit trees, and why, why plant a fucking pine? 
just to get pine straw to sell to someone else? Why don't you just why don't we make have fruit trees? That way and just put them out in public areas and cities and shit all around all around the cities. Have fucking fruit trees. Where people can just walk down the street, you know, if they want some fruit, they can just peel them right off the tree. Take the ripest pieces that are fall off or the ones that fall off you can take and eat. I mean it just it just makes sense. And the system doesn't currently make much sense. And I just saw this thing about and you know Andrew Yang's climate climate change plan and he's a he's got everything on there right about how California is gonna be going through thirty year long droughts. That's that's gonna be happening. I mean it's it's happening because of the way that, that it's set up over there. It's all concrete everywhere. All that mass gets heated up, and because of the sun, it heats all that mass up. It gets super hot in these areas. When what, what happens? It gets super hot. You release all this all this heat, and all the storms travel out away from where you're at because there's no moisture there anymore. Because you've heated it up, and you've gotten all the moisture to come up out of there and the winds have blown all your moisture away so you got no moisture in all your entire grid to your entire fucking area out there there's no moisture anywhere and what do they do anytime you do get rain what does the system do we have concrete rivers to channel the shit out effectively as possible right total bullshit stupidest idea and what happens with all that is it doesn't because it's concrete and it's it's absorbing all the tons of heat so that gets hot and then what happens the water runs through it and then it evaporates so quickly because the entire city is hot as could be because it's absorbing the sun's energy but good thing is all this is designed for a reason the concrete all that shit Everything that we, that we have is designed to keep us from going into an ice age. Because the people who are in control know what's going on. And with, if this was, if we were going into a, a, a heating age right now, an age of gl global warming that wasn't man-made, you know, if, we, if we're going into an age that was, that we're supposed to be going into a warming period right now, guess what technology we, we would have? We would have technology that's Clean movie. We have 100% solar tech. You know, have solar everywhere for all the power. We have all electric vehicles. It would already be implemented. But the, we burn. We burn this shit for a reason. Because we know what's what's coming around the corner, and it's a very fine threshold when it happens. It can happen very quickly. Very quickly, we go into a freezing age. But we need to be able to control both ways, and that's why using, you know, a uh, anhydrous ammonia refrigeration system in con conjunction with one of these uh, high-tech solar arrays that boils salt, and makes salt to its melting point. I think that's basically the only only way to do it, and what you do is. You just make cold, and then, then and then whenever you don't want cold, you can make power. You know, if you don't need it, if you decide that you, it's too much, then you can just use it to make regular power. But it's a very effective solar system because you're absorbing heat instead of just instead of uh, absorbing the heat instead of just uh, absorbing the visible spectrum, the visible spectrum of it. You're just shooting it all at this thing and getting as much heat as you can you're kind of building it up and getting a residual as it builds up hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter but yeah it's good shit right good fucking shit and if you're not gonna if you haven't decided on voting for Andrew Yang just fucking do it because if you're a citizen that means you can fucking vote and if you can vote, you should vote for Adrian Yang because he's going to give you a thousand dollars a month. Every fucking citizen. So, fuck the system. Vote for the guy 
that's gonna help you out. Not the rest of the fucking world. Anyways. Be selfish. Vote for the guys that give you $1,000 a month. <laughs> so that's what people do. And that's the beauty of the campaign. Is that by, by being self selfish, you will be selfless in the same time. And there's nothing more beautiful than your selfishness turning into selflessness. But, anyways, let me get off here. I fucked my wrist up. Bike riding. I'll show you my bike. Because, ah, oh, I fucked my knee up bad, too. It's all scratched down. My arm is brutalized there. All fucked up. All skinned down to the nub. Little spot on my hand. Oh, yeah. Good fun. Good fucking fun. This shit skid down. I'm not sure if you can see it. Let's see. Yeah, I skid that shit down to the fucking knob. And this one broke over here. A good thing that's just my secondary shifter. I don't really need it. This one still works, even though the face is totally fucked in it. But it's grinded all the way the fuck down. I want to see if I can find a metal one. I'm going to look for a metal one. One with a metal handle. But yeah, I think I fractured my wrist because it's, it's all fucked up. So I'm just trying not to fucking do too much now. Take it easy. But yeah. <clears throat> that was a fucked up experience. Fucked up my fork. That shit snapped off. That grinded down. Look, that's grinded all the way fucking. That's almost through. Oh my god. I ate it hard. I was going fast. I was going really fast. Ugh. What? Anyways. Hope everyone has a great day. And whenever you're watching this, a great night. I don't know. If it's 200 years from now and you're watching this, that's even cool too. But, yeah. Smart Sarood here. About to sign out on this video. 17 minutes long. But, yeah, I'm going to put a lot of catchy catchphrases in here for this video. Good tags. That's it. I love you all. Have a wonderful time. Bye.